distanced yourself from the whole thing. Hello, everybody. Oh. Hello. Hello. Welcome. And eh. let's zoom in. Lots of familiar faces and some new faces. Hope everyone. Hi, Lisa. Barbara. Hi. How's everyone's uh, Saturday going? Good. Going. You're good. in Ontario. You are locked into your house, so you can't go anywhere. <laughs> Except for a walk. I just went for a walk. <laughs> yeah. So many nice, uh, nice outside. It's really the sun just came out. So, yeah. Uh, where are you? Where are you all at? Uh, we well, I'm in Toronto. Toronto, yeah, Greater Bro. Toronto area. Where are you from, Michelle? I'm in Santa Cruz, California, in the oh, U.S. Oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> Must be such I'm, a different. Uh, how how is everything over there in terms of the uh, kind of like the pandemic? <laughs> Well, um, our numbers are going down and I hear they're opening things up more and more, but I'm still not doing anything. I'm going for walks with a mask and yeah. mostly doing everything else on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the total opposite here. We're at like the, the highest numbers we've ever seen. <laughs> so oh, it's, oh. yeah, even with the vaccines coming out. So it's it's nice that we get to do these creative things while we're indoors, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. This and this is really wonderful for me also because I'm still pretty isolated because I'm not comfortable going out around people yeah. at this point still. Definitely. So have you yep. been doing the doing these classes? It sounds like for a while if you know some of the other people. Yeah, it's been we've we well I started my online classes March 2020. So it's been a it's been a wow. silver lining to just meet everybody online because I've been doing classes in person. So oh, yeah. It's definitely been quite a year. Let me a year a plus. Yeah. We're all yeah, it's it's crazy how much time has flown too, but yeah. Well, I'm excited to have found you. Thank you, Michelle. I'm excited for uh, to have you and and everyone else here. Actually, while while we wait for people to kind of trickle in, let me just. Uh... So, uh, Nick, so I was supposed to be out tonight, and of course, uh, plans got canceled. Um, but I haven't yeah. had dinner or anything, so I'm kind of going to be watching while I make dinner. But can I get the recording after? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'll sort of uh, I'll get the I'll give myself a preview, but I appreciate yeah. the understanding. <laughs> so Absolutely. bummed. I thought it was a ghost drive. It was like a mystery drive, and I thought, oh well, it's in the car. They'll probably let that go. And the guy canceled it. It was supposed to start at six fifteen. He canceled it at like three. Oh, is so. it? A, it's a. It's what is a ghost drive? It's like it's kind of like a, a sort of like a scavenger hunt mystery thing, but it's oh. like it's kind of a car rally. You follow an app and you go from place to place. And there's one in Burlington. There's one in uh, Milton. Oh, and wow. Yeah. That and sounds so fun. Like, yeah. And so it seemed safe. I was, I was going because my boyfriend has his kid for um, for spring break. And I thought it's one of the few things we could do. Hi. And got canceled. So. Wow. I, I've heard of geocaching where you kind of go hiking and you're on the app looking for oh, hidden yeah. things. Too. Oh, Vicho. Vicho's in Chile. And so I guess they have geocaching there too i found out i found out about it uh, like two years ago i've never yeah. done it but i i think it's really fun it's it really would be cool. really fun to do oh it's so nice it's so cool to hear things that we all kind of like have in common globally right as we connect yes. virtually it's such a an amazing thing hello to the new faces yeah. we have some um young humans with us. I love it. So I'll, I'll let people trickle in. I've opened the 
I'll, I've opened the waiting room so people can kind of just trickle in. But as we get started, um, it's going to be super simple today. I usually teach paint classes, so you need all these supplies. But what I love about getting into sketching is that you don't need much to get creative. So pencil, eraser, sketchbook, and I always say have some liquid. It can be any form that you'd like, but stay <laughs> hydrated. And um, while we're kind of introducing ourselves, I love that we've started kind of talking and warming up. You can feel free to pop into the chat where you're tuning in from today. And why do you sketch or why, why were you interested in sketching? I know this is an intro class. We have some veterans in the room. So we're gonna be starting from uh, the foundation. So feel free to pop into the chat where you're, come, where you're joining from today. I love seeing and kind of hearing uh, who is joining us. And I hope that the chat is open. Oh, here we go, everybody. Are, are you okay with people also um talking or would you rather that we mute ourselves and good not question talk? uh i actually love interaction so i love it as long as it's not like in the middle with the class today our agenda is going to be um a little bit of theory and then we're gonna jump into like very uh just just exercises and so during the exercise is a great time to uh kind of share and join i love when everyone talks so <laughs> welcome vicho from neverland i love it Mostly <laughs> Toronto, no problem. Mississauga, I've taken two of your painting classes before, which were fun, and I've always wanted to learn to draw. Amazing, from Toronto, and I have two different sketchbooks, one just for fun and one to practice techniques and skills. That is amazing, NW. Australia, ooh, what time is it in Australia right now? So now, <laughs> Southwestern Ontario, amazing. And why you sketch? I think um, I think there's many reasons that uh, people um, kind of engage with art, and so I always love to hear. A lot of people have heard lately is very just therapeutic in the time of chaos. And while you all kind of introduce yourselves to each other, um, I will introduce myself for anyone that is new here. My name is Jen Mickey, and so you can call me Miss Mickey, Mickey like Mickey Mouse. I am an artist teacher. I actually am a full-time teacher during the day. So uh, I, I love running these classes and I'm just very passionate about spreading creativity and, and getting people to see that they all have, everyone has an artist inside of them. So I've hosted many classes in person and we jumped online when the pandemic started. And I've been so thankful for that um, to meet all of you. And uh, yeah, that's a little bit about me. These are some classes that we've done in the past Starry Night. Uh, there's the Water Lilies. We're doing this class actually next Saturday, uh, a bit earlier than this time right now, but uh, feel free to join us. It's a free art um, paint class where we'll be learning a bit about Picasso. Uh, that will be a lot of fun. And uh, this is our agenda for today. So why sketch the importance of shading, pressure control? Uh, for anyone that joined the last class, uh, a little bit of review from that. And today, the main thing is recognizing shapes as we uh, are getting into sketching. And then we'll go into some practice prompts. We have Las Vegas in the house. Amazing. All right. Uh, so kind of just to set the mood, uh, I have uh, two of these quotes here. Photography is an immediate reaction. Drawing is a meditation um, by Henry Bresson. And then learning to draw is really a matter of learning to see, to see correctly. And that means a good deal more than merely looking with the eye. So uh, one thing I love about art that I've learned from many artists uh, of the past is that it's really about the way you're seeing things. And so when we look at, at uh, recognizing shapes today, when, when we are sketching, this is a big part of it. And it's also the beauty of sketching where you can create your own perception of things, whether it's real or an impression of it. Um, and to kind of start us off, patience is bitter, but it's fruit is sweet. So just be patient with yourself if you're sketching for the first time or if you haven't sketched in a while. Um, even for myself, having painted and 
just kind of getting into sketching the past couple of years, it can be very frustrating. But the fact that you're here, um, pat yourself on the back and just be patient with yourself. It takes practice. Okay, so kind of to warm us up, I'm going to share screen and I will be having my document camera. So I don't know how the window looks for most people, but you should be able to kind of have me on one end and the screen on the other side, okay? Can everyone see my paper okay? Yours is very tiny. Is it any way you can do half and half? Yeah, so to do half and half, you have to minimize your window and and then you should be able to okay. kind of drag. Yeah, okay. you have take it off of full screen and then you'll have the my shared slides on one end and then the window. Okay. There's a little bit of tech. You're, because you're oh, a little okay. out of focus. Yes. Because if I share the camera, then you won't be able to see some of the reference photos. So well, that's good. hopefully yeah. everyone has an idea of that. Okay. okay got it. Oh, I love seeing all the new faces and I love seeing kids too. I teach grade four and they're all boys. So I like seeing girls. They're <laughs> all students. boys? All boys. It's a, it's a lot of, uh, a lot of energy. <laughs> okay. Wow. So as we get into pressure control and shadowing, kind of just to give us an example, you see the apple on the left side here. There's a bit of shading, um, some highlights there, and you can see where the shadows are. But then when you look at the apple on the right side, um, the more uh, control and the more practice you have with shading, you want to be able to eventually shade so that it's so gradual and smooth that there is uh, so much detail and you can see how real it looks compared to the first apple, right? Even with this example here, there's some shading on the left. It's a beautiful portrait. But when you look at the one on the right side, when you have more contrast with the pressure and the control, it really pops when it comes to your sketch a lot more, right? Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of practice here. So one way I love to practice, and I think this is something you can do over and over again. Would have been helpful if I had pencil, but create a little rectangular box for yourself. And we're gonna just practice sketching. Okay. What kind of pencil should we use? I'm just using a regular HB pencil that I have right here. When you, uh, I, for, so for, to give some context, I'm uh, with all of my classes, even with the paint classes, I try to keep the supplies as kind of simple. So as possible, when you get more into sketching, there's like charcoal and, and different granite types of pencils, but, and you'll, you'll kind of feel the, the difference with the quality, but for today, any pencil will work as long as it's not like a lead pencil, right? So I'm just going to make a little box for myself. There we go. And the challenge here, what you want to do is to actually gradually, you're going to practice, we're practicing our pressure control. So as you can see, you're going to start with very light pressure. And this is a lot of self awareness here, too. So very lightly and the goal is that by the end of the box you can put the as much pressure as you can so it's a very dark right so i'm slowly getting i'm slowly adding more pressure as i go along it's kind of it's kind of feels kind of funny even on your wrist because you're you're really you're really aware of the, the the control that you have on the pencil, and as you get to the end, again, you can feel a big difference from the beginning, right? You can do this a couple of times. You can do it with just the whole spectrum there, or you can even divide that box up into let's say five sections and that kind of gives you a better idea of when to add a little bit more pressure right hopefully you can all see 
Yep. Okay. So again, we're going to do, we're going to practice an actual still life sketch. So we're going to, we want to kind of practice this so that we can apply it after. When I get to the line, once again, it's a benchmark. Add a little bit more pressure. Are you using the tip of your pencil or the side? I am using the side of the pencil. Okay. Yeah. The more times you do this, you'll find that it's more gradual each time. So even with the next photo here, you wanna go from that really abrupt transition to a very gradual transition, which is what this kind of bar helps us with. Right. And kind of just take mental notes of, okay, if I'm, if I'm sketching something that's not too light, I'm gonna use less pressure. It's just kind of warm up, right? Okay. And as you kind of finish that off, I'm gonna put us some Chopin. Okay. So the first kind of uh, warm up sketch I have, we usually do like a sphere or an apple. We have a fruit after this, but taking a look at this cube, you can see that it's, there are different, uh, there's different lighting on each side. So from, when you're sketching something, you also ask yourself, okay, where is the light coming from? Wherever the light is coming from, looks like it's coming from the left side here, right? So the light is hitting this side here and then the, the shadow is being casted. And so let's practice by kind of sketching this cube. I'm gonna start with the square, just like the quote we, we heard earlier sketching, whether it's sketching or painting, it's a lot about the way you're seeing things, right? So I'm starting with this simple cube, just as a warm up. And this shadow, the shadow that's being casted is kind of almost like a, you can see a bit of a triangle here, the corner. It's almost like wrinkled depending on where, what the cube is sitting on. It's like a piece of cloth. With uh, these prompts, you'll find that it's a bit quicker, so you don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect right now. We're just getting warmed up, kind of getting used to holding that pencil, right? So once you have that outline, we can then kind of shade in the shadows. So with this main face here, we want it to be one consistent pressure throughout the whole box. Using the side of the pencil, your goal is to have this whole face have that same amount of pressure. Sorry. And just concentrate. I think it was, uh, I think it was Vicho that mentioned in our last sketch class that kind of just take your sketchbook everywhere with you. The more practice, you kind of just sketch everything around you. So if you look close at this cube, I tried my best. There's a bit of inconsistency around here. 
and kind of just smudge it in, right? But we wanted, the goal was to have this whole face a very, the, the same amount of pressure. And now with this um, shadow, we see that it's a bit darker, right? But even around this bottom, this bottom uh, piece here underneath the edge, it gradually gets darker. It's very, very subtle, but it is definitely darker than that face of the cube. So we're gonna add a little bit more pressure. A little bit more pressure. And then as I'm coming out, And as, as you shade things in, it's kind of like when your teacher told you when you're younger, staying within the lines, but also keeping it consistent in terms of the direction you're sketching in, because every stroke, every pencil mark will show. So I'm kind of going up and down. I find it difficult to do the edges well because you don't have as much control when you're doing it on the side. Mm. Are you talking about the edge of the pencil, Michelle? Um, no, I'm sorry, like the edge of the shape. Ah, uh, yeah. And especially as you're moving, it's almost like right now, even as I'm sketching, I can see where I've stopped and continued. So it's really in that pressure control, even for myself. The reason why, honestly, I run a lot of these classes is, is to have that extra practice myself. Cause I don't think that as an artist, you ever reach that. Well, for me, at least, I, I think I'll always be practicing and, and trying to better myself. But even for me, I, I think I can always use more practice, right? So we, the goal here is for us to just see the difference between that face and the darker shadow, which we added a bit more pressure. On top, we see a bit of texture, but I'm just going to kind of shade it in a lighter, a lighter pressure than that face that we had earlier. And see, with this exercise, I have a picture of a cube on the screen, but you can always practice this by just picking an object that you have in the room. Okay, I'm gonna give about 30 seconds. This was just a nice little warm up because we're going to practice with some fruit, some digital fruit. <laughs> Doesn't sound very tasty. Yeah, <laughs> there's actually many classes that, um, I, I have a different style of teaching, but there are many classes that are I know even free that have uh, still life um, prompts or even like a live model. And it's, it's a lot of fun to, to sketch something live with a group, kind of like what we're doing here, but I don't actually have real fruit. It is a photo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just find with my, the lighting and the camera, that's something that is uh, it's, it's a lot of work and there are many amazing classes out there, which I, I will share as well. And if anyone has, I know uh, there's a, many people in this class here that have amazing resources. So if you ever email them to me, I will blast it out and kind of share the art community, especially during this time is amazing. Okay. So we've done a bit of pressure control practice and we get to see that difference with the cube so far. We'll do another quick practice. We'll do about five minutes of this, but again, looking at this, I want you to put into the chat, where do you think the light is coming from? Do you think the light is coming from the left side or the right side? And put an L or an R in the chat. Sometimes it can be tricky, but when you kind of, uh, recognize where the light is coming from yeah perfect we are great at recognizing where the light is coming from because when it's almost like with this banana you see that the 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 tip of the banana here is bright so you would 
kind of assume like, oh, maybe the light is coming from this top corner here and it's kind of looking down. But like everyone says, well, most people, it is coming from the right side. And you see that shadow being casted because of um, the apple covering it up. So it's casting that shadow. So the light is coming from the right side. Okay. So recognizing that. Tricky. Tricky, tricky. Um, we're going to sketch uh, our, I think it's a lemon or lime, lime, apple, and banana. Very quick. Again, all of those. <laughs> all of those. <laughs> yes. The goal is not to be perfect. Okay. Right. The goal is just to kind of get warmed up because um, we can't always be perfect. I know we want to make that banana exact, but it's just a very quick sketch. A lot of, um, live sketch classes too they'll do like two minute prompts i remember there was like a 30 second prompt and i was freaking out i'm like i'm not done yet <laughs> i'm not done yet i'm not ready to move on but again it's kind of us getting used to looking at it and you always want perfection right yeah <laughs> oh yes <laughs> so i'm just kind of light, lightly sketching it And I think when you are working on, I think with like a painting, it's a bit different because you want to spend that time for that finished product. But with sketching, I think the more you, you practice with, with uh, very uh, short exercises is actually when you're really warming up your eye and looking at, okay, the proportions of things. How far is the stem from the uh, the other banana? That's what I'm looking at right now. I think a lot of art is also us practicing to, to be imperfect and being okay with, or kind of like laughing at our self portraits like we've been doing <laughs> in our classes, right? Yeah. part of the banana I don't know what it's called up here where it holds it all together it's tricky I think if I would if I would have been able to start again, I actually would have started with the fruits in the front and then filled in the background. I'm so used to painting where we start with our background first, but let's just start with a simple apple. And we have a very perfect little line. I always remind my students to make sure that they're breathing because we forget to breathe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know we have some friends. I had a couple emails from um, people who need the live captioning. So we are live on YouTube right now as well for the uh, hard of hearing. So I hope that they are also enjoying the class right now. Nice. I was so worried about the tech and everything that I forgot to prepare my supplies, my pencil. <laughs> right. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I find that when you are sketching as well, you can probably sketch something. You usually should sketch something more than more than once because you find that the second time you always notice things a bit differently. Okay, so now that I have the kind of basic shapes, I'm just gonna play around with the shadows now. So this lime here, very obvious with the dark shadow here and it gradually gets lighter and then you have a bit of that highlight the shine so super dark pressure around 
eight o'clock right here. Let me turn this over here. There we go. Go. We're dark and then gradually get lighter. Again, we're not aiming for perfection, but pay attention to especially the lime because the shading is not as abrupt. You want it to be a lot more gradual in terms of the transition here and the apple because they are round shapes. Whereas the banana, it's just very, it's almost like you're, you're sketching a whole nother shape in there with those shadows because they're, they're lines. So I'm gonna continue with this a little bit. A bit of like a stem. The way I see it, it's almost like you're breaking up that one Lime. If I were to be painting, I would be like, oh, there's different shades of green in there, almost like a paint by numbers point of view. So you're doing that same thing with sketching, but you're breaking it up in terms of the, the darker tones and the lighter tones because you're only working with black and white, right? So it's a bit trickier. And I'd love, we can, we're going to share at the end kind of our products because a big part of art is also being able to share it and be vulnerable and kind of uh, giving it these tiny little dots here for the grooves and the lime. Okay. Move on to the apple. I'm keeping it very basic. I'm not gonna go into the kind of texture of the apple. We're focusing on just the shadowing and the pressure control practice right now, okay? Do you teach charcoal also? You were talking uh, about- Not yet. <laughs> no, I don't. That's something I'm still playing around with. Oh, cool. Yeah. I find even with, uh, I'm, I'm used to teaching acrylic paints, but right now I'm playing around with watercolor and it's like, there's common, there's a lot of common uh, things between them, but it's very different with- different mediums oh. and charcoal is one of those things <laughs> yeah I've never tried charcoal so yeah but yeah acrylic and watercolor are like two different planets so different As, as I am sketching and kind of looking at these things, some questions I ask myself or 
kind of note is that, okay, this shadow is starting in the middle of kind of marking off to, to help you with your proportions. So a lot of it is noticing where things end and start to get the size. Cause usually sizing, especially when you get into sketching figures is kind of noticing the space between things. So the next, uh, the next sketch class, I'm gonna focus on lines. So we're gonna slowly delve into the, the different elements of art, line being one of them, shape, space is another one, texture, right? So when you kind of combine all of these things together, it, you get all the kind of foundations when it comes to the elements. Cool. Okay. It's so wonderful that you're doing this and making this available to people when we really need something good to focus yeah. on. That's exactly what I wanted. And, and like, even I find what's, what's tough and with, with doing free classes, I find is that like for the today's class, there was about like 65 people that registered and people won't, won't, aren't as committed to show up, but I, I still want to be able to, kind of, like you said, during this time, especially, it's just something that people can look forward to. Yes, definitely. We need things to take our mind off of the bombarding of information and all this sad news, really. And just being, you know, a lot alone. And so we get yeah. to be together. Yeah, that's, that's a huge thing. I think when it comes to art I find that for me personally it's not about like getting myself to start it's just like having people to to do it with that makes yes. a big difference yes definitely and we can hang out together and learn something and yep. do some art and not have to what like wear masks <laughs> with yes. our virtual classes with my 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 students uh, my kids we were in person and I can never see their face, but I was like, I can all see all of your smiles and and an eye and your mouth and everything. And it makes such a difference when you get to see everyone's full face. Yeah. Things that we take for granted when we when we had it. I know, huh? Right. Isn't that a weird thing to think about that that's something to really appreciate now is to get to see each other's faces. Yeah. It's crazy. And I think that's another silver lining of this whole pandemic. It's given a lot of time for myself. And I think my loved ones to reflect a lot on things we took for granted, but just to be thankful, just to be healthy and to wake up, have another day, let alone yeah. have the, have art with us. Yeah. Okay. I definitely am not the greatest example of this, but I find that when we talked about patience, it was another reminder for myself, but when I'm sketching, I find that when I'm reaching towards the end of my, I, I tend to rush. Definitely. I'm just like, okay, I think it looks about right, but <laughs> you can never we can go keep going at this the sketch I, I, for the whole class if we wanted to i'll just say that right. but we're gonna we want to cover a bit more so i'm gonna definitely be sending out the recording we can kind of keep going oh i love the chat it's been a great sanity saver love it being alone together antidote to four walls of survival art is liquid joy absolutely and I find, I don't know if it's just the art scene, but I, I, I find that with artists, um, it's a really good energy all the time, which I love for surrounding myself. Okay, we're gonna keep moving on. Kind of have a, had a little practice now with our shading and our, our uh, pressure control. Um, but let me pause. 
this and we are going to jump into recognizing shapes. So I've been doing this a lot more because I am not strong at all when it comes to figures, but what I can appreciate about recognizing shapes is that we get to kind of uh, create that first building block for us. Um, and when you look at these figures, for example, you want to end up with something like this, uh, the, the full figure of the woman. But if we're to break it down, it's literally very simple shapes, circles, and then we have the lines there um, kind of mimicking the skeleton, right? And so we're going to watch a short video kind of just to give us a bit of a um, intro on shapes and what it and what it does for art. Okay, it's going to give us a bit of perspective. We're going straight down to the foundations and I should be able to hear. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Turn this on. Fruit has played a prominent role in the history of art. It's long been a favorite subject for artists making still life paintings and drawings. Looking at still lifes of fruit is a useful way of studying how artists approach making shapes. Shape is one of the seven elements of art, along with line, form, texture, value, space, and color. When the beginning of a line connects with its own end or intersects with another, a shape is formed. In visual art, shapes are flat and are defined by their length and width. In other words, they're two-dimensional. There is an infinite number of shapes, but all fall into one of two categories, geometric or organic. Geometric shapes are commonly recognized such as squares, hexagons, rectangles, and circles. Organic shapes are freeform and often one of a kind. Artists learn how to see the world around them as basic shapes. Simplifying objects into geometric and organic shapes makes drawing them easier. Shapes inherit the qualities of the lines that were used to construct them. For instance, this painting by Cezanne has heavy, solid outlines that define the shapes, whereas the fruit in this ink drawing by Manola Rocky is made up of very soft, fuzzy lines. Each approach to making lines produces different feelings and associations in the viewers. Some artists make oranges that are perfectly round, while others draw or paint every little bump and detail of the skin. The next time you're looking at a painting or drawing, try to notice how the artist is using shape in their work. If you were making a drawing or painting, how would you interpret the objects in front of you? Would you draw them as faithfully as possible? Or would you choose to represent them more abstractly? Practice for yourself by setting up a bowl of fruit and drawing what you see. So I know it started out a bit elementary, and I am an elementary school teacher, but um, it, there was a lot of gold there that uh, she spoke on, especially when it came to perspective. So um, I think even when it comes to sketching, I, I always told myself that uh, it has to look exactly like what I'm seeing, but as, as we saw, it's all about what you interpret as well. So I have a picture here on the screen and it's a beautiful landscape and for me personally, as a, as a teacher, when I look at this, if I were to break it up to teach, it's valuable um, for you to kind of make note of how you would start to sketch this and what shapes you see. So let me kind of annotate here. We're gonna kind of practice this with um, another picture later on, but this is a bit heavier and I'm kind of taking a look at time, but I kind of notice shapes, right? Maybe a little tra trapezoid underneath here, 
but by using these simple shapes and seeing the landscape differently, that's where you kind of start with sketching. So kind of just noticing and recognizing these shapes first so that it kind of, uh, it, it makes it more simple for you to see. And then you would build on with the details of um, the lines and the shading, right? So it's, it's almost a different way of seeing the world around you. And um, when you notice art as well, you, you can start to see those shapes because it's the most basic form that we can kind of grasp um, to build on a uh, very basic foundation. So I have, I chose this cute picture here because I noticed very, very uh, simple shapes. Even within this little puppy, I thought it would bring us a bit of joy, but the head, we have like the almond shaped eyes and the cup here, right? It has the uh, kind of oval that it's sitting in, but I will put this up here. I'm actually gonna let you feel free. We're gonna be doing some um, prompts. Our, our last practice prompt will be you to be you picking uh, an item or two in your room. But right now we're going to sketch this one together. So let me kind of share my camera again. Okay. And I challenge us to notice the shapes again. So I'm going to start with, now that I look at it, it won't be too easy. And I, and I'm, I might just butcher this very cute puppy's face, but we want to start with the basic shape of the head. I'm going to start with a circle and it's more towards the right side. And feel free. So we're noticing, we're practicing how to look at things around us before we can kind of just jump in, right? So it's us being able to look at things differently and kind of analyzing. So I have the head and a little ear sticking out to the left side here, almost like half an oval. And it doesn't quite pass. It's about a third if we're to measure third of the, the, uh, the length of the face on the left side. And then that ear on the right side, kind of just jumping out a little bit right here. Again, our goal is for it, not for it to be perfect, but you're recognizing the different shapes, very simple shapes, just for us to break down, okay? We're gonna take it one step at a time. make it bigger. There we go. And now I'm actually going to sketch another circle for the that the mouth part of the puppy here. So a smaller circle right about here because you can always erase those lines in between right once you have that we can then sketch in the nose, which it looks like a triangle, right? Upside down triangle. Have two little circles for the nostrils in there. And what I realized when it comes to sketching and painting is that the reason why a lot of the time, I guess when I, more so when I, I, do, I paint and draw, I look at it, I'm like, this is so bad. Like I, I, this looks nothing like what I'm trying to, trying to paint. And what I realize most of the time is actually because you're just not done yet. 
I realized that if you give it another hour, half hour of you continuing to kind of work at it, it changes it completely. So if you're looking at anything in the beginning, remind yourself that I'm just not done yet. There's just a lot more to go. A lot of erasing <laughs> might be a part of that too. So I have my triangle in here and then you have the line coming down, a little bit of a line and it splits open here. Very subtle diagonal lines and the tongue underneath. Okay, and I'm just gonna do the eyes. I'm noticing how far it is from that nose and it is start with circles and then add the sides the other eye is actually very close to the ear literally right on the side because it is more of a side profile this dog Wondering how many people here are cat people versus dog people. I'm actually a cat person. Cat. Me too. <laughs> cat. <laughs> Should have picked a cat picture, darn. <laughs> oh, Nicole says cats. <laughs> then Nicole will. <laughs> and dogs. <laughs> That's Nicole. Totally. It's a funny story behind it. Again, this is actually a very um, advanced picture, but our goal is to literally just notice the, the different shapes, right? So we will not finish and and uh, it will not, I'm gonna tell you now, it will not look like the picture, but we will, we're just focusing on recognizing shapes. I'm learning if we don't try, we never will learn. So, you, lady. <laughs> oh. oh, who was that? I actually, uh, let me yeah, keep going. Wow, mm -hmm. yours is pretty darn good. Little things like, cause we started with the circle, but there's things missing. Like if I were to add a little bit of curves onto that circle, right? So we always start with those basic shapes, but we add in those finer details to create a closer interpretation of the real thing. If, that, if that's what you're going for at least. With this dog, like you would have to because it's black and brown, you would have to literally color everything around it that's black. But I'm just gonna be focusing on the outline. Ashley says dogs, <laughs> yay. I'm going to stop with the head here and then actually go into the cup. My kitty is sitting here on my lap while I draw and she approves of all the cat people. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Get my eraser.
so I noticed that the the rim of the cup actually starts around the eye and it ends right underneath his chin here. So after that brim, now that I have the cup, I can then fill in that space with his little paws. And with the paws, I, oh, bless you. With the paws, I actually see rectangles, if you notice them there, right beside his face. I'm going to draw four rectangular shapes right beside each other. Just notice the width, the difference, right? And if you ever looked at figure drawings, fingers are actually a bunch of rectangles. <laughs> so it's literally the breakdown. And then we have the paws on the left side there, which look more like ovals. His paws are totally adorable. Yeah, so cute. Again, we're just practicing our ability to kind of recognize those shapes and, and see them. And I think uh, the fun thing about when you get into painting and, and drawing is that when you walk around, uh, whether we are taking a walk in the park, you'll start to notice these things too. If you practice those those little things um, when you're when you don't have a pencil in your hand, it almost makes it easier when you do, because it's a way of seeing things. Let's start. Have those little fingernails coming out. So. when you're ready to kind of add on those details is when you can kind of erase those those foundation lines that you started with with the basic shapes and kind of start to mor morph it into the real I love his little tongue I know it's a very shape actually almost like the bottom of a rounded cube I'd love for some of us to share after this too, if you're comfortable with it. I know we actually always have speech of sharing. 
Oops. Share screen, sorry. It's always fun to see everyone's interpretation of it. But something with this, it's a bit different than I guess our paint classes because it's, um, we're not using color. So there's not made much of a twist you can put onto your own. I hope that as as you're sketching this cute little mug puppy, <laughs> um, you're feeling a bit more confident as we go along too, because I find that either it's either very confident or very uh, hopeless, depending on where you, where you're at. Mine is pretty awful. <laughs> As long as you can laugh about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Leslie says too. <laughs> this is definitely a difficult one. I find um, when I when I'm picking these prompts, I think I'm a bit more optimistic than I, I should be a lot of the times. I, I hear that from my friends too. I'm a very optimistic person. Well, optimism's I, a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> I just hope that it didn't push everyone too much out of their comfort zone or if I pick something too tough that discourages you because that's the last thing I would want. Well, no, we just have to remember that, that again, it's like the more you try drawing things, the mm -hmm. more you'll, you'll get, get there eventually. Exactly. I always expect to magically just know how to do stuff like you pick it up. Somebody's mm. teaching that's done it forever and you pick it up once and you expect to. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. So it's very powerful how much technology has changed. Just the ability to learn things now, though, just with with YouTube and learning an instrument and a language everything has become so much more accessible that especially with the covid i find there's so much on, Zoom, yeah. on youtube there's so yeah. much it's yeah. almost overwhelming too because there's like there's so much to learn and it's like when would i you don't have the, that's what people yeah. laugh at me when i say oh, i'm so busy yeah <laughs> say, what are you busy with <laughs> <laughs> Nikki's classes. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I'm happy. Yeah. Well, I, I, my, the, my, the best positive thing about COVID is just getting to hang out with people from other countries that I would mm. never have gotten to yeah. hang out with yeah. before. So true. It's amazing. It's really, really, I, I think it's magical. It's amazing. It's all, yeah. it takes the, because I even with traveling, that's one thing I, I miss. But yeah. with traveling, it was always connecting with people that I loved most. And so this kind of just brought it all together that we can still do this without a plane ticket. <laughs> yes. Our puppy's coming along. Yes. Picasso dog or weird Magdaliano pup face. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know, I think we, we brought up Mogdiliano. Let me kind of just search it up because that's a very funny reference that I think will make people feel better, Demi. So Mogdiliano is an artist. Uh, I actually only learned about him through Jenny, but um, he would, let me try to share here. The interpretation is uh, kind of like stretch out very long, elongated faces of, of people. And so that reference is probably because this pup looks very distorted, <laughs> I'm guessing, Demi. <laughs> so it's okay. <laughs> I, I always try to make my drawings like picture perfect, like it's like mm. a photograph. Uh, yeah. 
I don't uh, uh, like use my imagination too much. I guess mm. that's something I can work on. Whereas I guess with other people, like that would be a that would be a a weakness of theirs, like being able to really take the time to make something look realistic. I'm going to try to just kind of shade in the black. There's something off about him, but... Me too. This is That's good. okay. <laughs> His face is like... It's not yeah. like... <laughs> Hairs, like hair is like something so... I, I, I don't know how people um, sketch down to the realistic fine hairs of animals. It's really amazing. It takes a lot of time too. Again, this is us doing like a 10 minute sketch, right? So. Yeah. That was it. There we go. Vicho, let me share yours. Vicho is our digital artist and he He's amazing. <laughs> so good. Oh, wow. Oh, sure. you already went from Chile, huh? Let's there see. There we go. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Oh, oh my goodness. See, that looks good. Beecher, wow. do you have any kind of tips when you when it comes to, like, the foundation of the proportions of his, I don't know if it's him, his face there, what you did there with the, I see you have, like, an oval and then a circle. Yeah, I start with uh, very basic shapes. Mm -hmm. For example, the, the head. Wait. Um, it's so cool to see it. The action. head is just a, a circle. Then sometimes I do a cross section to mark where the eyes would be, mm. or what the, the face is looking at. Then I mark the snout just like a circle, then the eyes. I first, I start positioning the, the features with very simple shapes mm -hmm. and very light lines. Mm. Wow, it's beautiful. The cross section of the face, those lines help with the, the placement of uh, mm. the eyes and the snout there. Yeah. And then it's I this start... literally same same basic for like all faces, right? Yeah. I love it. So now Vicho is gonna be teaching the rest of the <laughs> 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 okay. no, 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 no. Vicho is um Vicho is a, a animator, so he draws a lot of people as well, which which is something I don't do. And so I I, I find I can learn a lot from you, Vicho. It's awesome. So cool. Wow. That's pretty cool. Very Love cool. it. Let's go back to gallery view. Okay. Did anyone else want to share theirs? Uh, I hope, I guess you don't want to follow up to that. But... Not after me, you know, but... yeah. Oh, wow, Lisa. That's great shading. Wow. That's amazing. Oh, that's really nice. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Lisa looks great. That's really good. Trying wow. to get it in the middle there. Let's see there, Suma. Mm -hmm. Let me add you in there. Looks good. Yeah, it looks when you I'm, add in the, the black hair, it, it really makes it yeah. closer to the yeah. yeah. It's, it's yeah. so different than just like the white. Let's mm -hmm. see, Suman. Mine is Suman. Uh, it's <laughs> Wow. So cute. His, his face is like a pygmy something. I don't know. What. Anyway. I definitely think that I could have added in the, the, the lines for the cross section to, to place yeah. the eyes. I think that that's always one thing that's uh, challenging. Yeah. Let's see who else. Anyone else want to share? Let's see. Emily. Good job. Yeah. Yay. Wow. Good job. Oh, you did too? 
Or is there two people so, there? Someone's one is hiding. My daughter's. This is my daughter's. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. My daughter did that one, and then I did this one. Wow. <laughs> she ran away. She's embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, Joy. I see Joy holding it up. I'll try to get everybody. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh. You definitely have the basic shapes in there. Looks good. Let's see who else. Does anyone else want to hold it up? I'm just. Well, I'll show mine oh, here we go. I had I had some trouble, but is that you, Michelle? There we go. We'll yes. go Michelle, and then I'll go to Nicole. <laughs> oh, nice. Really fine lines. Yes. Love it. This definitely takes time. Yes. Let's see Nicole. Nicole, the cat lover. <laughs> That's nice. Ooh. Aww. See, the shading makes a big difference. Yeah, it does. The shading with the uh, the black hairs definitely makes a big yes. difference. Love it. Let's see Lizeth. Aww. This is my daughter's. Wow. I see there's a trial and error there. It's a couple of <laughs> Nice. Oh, this one. This one's mine. Okay. Oh, well nice. done. Actually, they went on the iPad. Wow. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool, the iPad. Ooh. Digital art. Did anyone else else want to share? Okay. This last prompt we don't we don't have as much time as i planned but this will be fun because we're all going to end up with something can i, can I show mine can i oh, show mine is that you barbara no lauren 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 sorry let me try to get everyone whoops gallery view lauren i am uh oh there you are lauren oh wow lauren Whoa. amazing That's really wow cool. Lovely. Lauren, you must got, have been drawing for a long time. That's no, amazing. no, I just started again recently. But I got amazing. a lot out of what you said tonight. Thank you. Wow. Very good. Wonderful. Yeah. And Barbara, Barbara, I see you there. Barbara it and then It seems like a lot of you must be must have drawn a lot before. Wow. Oh, cute. He's amazing. There, I guess even with, with this dog, like there, it's a realistic picture, but even with this, we see different interpretations of how mm. we're viewing yes. things. Let's see, Bonnie. It's pretty light. I don't know if you can. Oh, yes. Okay. Nice. Looks great. Hi, excuse me. I'm uh, Ashley. I see Ashley. Nice. Oh. <laughs> so cute. It's like different versions of the puppy. Yeah. You would be proud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Okay, I think I got everyone. Okay. Now take a look around your room because uh, actually I'll, I'll share these two quotes here. It is only by drawing often, drawing everything, drawing incessantly that one fine day you discover to your surprise that you have rendered something in its true character. I think this is a great quote for us to remember um, when it comes to working towards that real the, the the most perfect sketch that you want to it's just a lot of practice you can't do sketches enough sketch everything and keep your curiosity fresh i wanted to share this this was um when i kind of searched up different prompts this was something that i found a lot of where you just practice with a whole bunch of different objects you see a mushroom there's a bunch of like fruit eyes pencils just objects around just to give you an example of what your practice can look like it can just be many sketches of many different objects on the page but uh like i said for our practice i'm going to change it to one because i i didn't realize the time again my optimism but pick one item in your room to sketch you can pick up something you have on your desk um, and remember to apply shade and pressure control and recognizing shapes and this will be the fun thing that we can all share in a bit i'm gonna give us um, five five to ten minutes okay so i'll play us a little bit of music this is where we can kind of just chit chat and um talk a bit while i play us some nice music very get into our flow is what we call it okay 
I will take this off and what am I gonna sketch? I think a lot of you did better than me with the puppy, so it's amazing. I found Your that puppy's with scared. Oh, thank you. I will name him. Oh, good. I will name him Cat. I'm kidding. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Oh, my have... aunt had a had a dog named Kitty. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I have a coworker who has a dog, and she she named him Bear. And and when she told my boys that his name was Bear, she's like, "But Miss Anderson, he's a dog. You know that, right?" Oh. <laughs> so they're just like, "Why did you name him Bear?" <laughs> oh, what cute. am I doing? Sketch. I will sketch these glasses. Hey, baby. Let me share us a bit of. We will all end up with something different. So no pressure at all. <laughs> no pun intended. No pressure. Oh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I'm glad someone can laugh at my lame jokes. Oh, yes, absolutely. Barbara, did you get to share yours? Yes, I did. Okay, yes. good. I just saw the note in the chat there. I jumped I out of my comfort zone. Yeah. <laughs> Come a long way. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I have my glasses there. Oh, how often do you teach on here? Uh, I, I've been trying to do... It started out with once a month, but uh, I'm trying to do at least bi-weekly. But this month I actually have something every week. Next week is the Picasso class with the paint. And right now we're in the midst of a five week self-portrait series. So uh, we're, we're on our fourth week tomorrow. Mm. Third. That's gonna be really cool. Is it third? Oh yes, third, third week. Third. Composition. Again, recognizing shapes and the pressure control you're keeping in mind. Let's play uh, some, some. I'm a huge throwback person. There you go. Hope everyone's staying hydrated. I have not been. Again, it doesn't have to be the whole page. I find when you draw bigger versions, it's, it does take a bit more time. You can do a couple objects if you want. Are you drawing glasses? Yes. I'm drawing glasses.
about three minutes and then we'll go around and share to end off the class today. Wow, I like your glass. Thank you. It's a little bit square and. Those are good. They're symmetrical. Looks so almost like. It has to be two identical. That's always hard. Yeah. It's like that eyeliner, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can never draw two eyes matching, no matter how many times I do it. Yeah. I'm actually going to challenge myself. I'm going to actually write down, draw 10 objects. So this will be kind of my homework. And you can do the same too. Get your practice in. So do you have another um sketching class scheduled i do uh i i'm gonna be doing a sketch class once a month for now so uh -huh. the next one will uh will be in may oh okay uh, and i'm actually gonna share actually while you guys finish off i can just share some of the classes coming up how about that and then we can kind of go around uh, just for anyone but i will send out an email with my upcoming classes let me just oh cool pull it up here for anyone that is interested um the next class like i said the one coming up is the picasso class which is uh next saturday 6 30 it's free pay what you can again it's going to be a lot of fun it will be two hours so it'll be a bit deeper but next month uh we are going to jump into another series for week around the world. I'm really excited for this one. And what, what kind of inspired it was all the past classes uh, I've been running with uh, the historical painters, but my uh, missing of traveling as well. So there's Canadian painting in there. We have uh, one from France with Monet and Tahitian with Paul Gauguin and um, a South African painting. So this will be a lot of fun. It is a uh, me plus free. So when you do buy the ticket, which is a special right now, um, until the 20, I believe the 20th, where you can, it's it's $38 and you can bring a friend to kind of split the cost for the all four weeks. This will be a lot of fun. And then um, our next uh, free event is Artists Unblock is actually our sketch, another sketch event, but it's more of a, a uh, quick prompt um, type of class where we get to kind of talk and and go in a bit of go into a bit of like uh, soul searching. So a bit of a unique prompts there. And then our next similar sketching class to this will be the end of May. So we're going to focus a bit more on lines, which will build on to re recognizing shapes. So I will send this out um, in an email. Cool. But uh, we can go around and kind of share. I wonder what we had a lot of wine glasses the last class <laughs> that people were sketching. I wonder what uh, everyone was sketching today. Show my face. 
Let's see. To go to gallery think, view and just... oh, if we go to gallery view, we could see everyone. Everybody. Oh yeah, let's do that. Lisa, that's a great pencil. I, I'm gonna spotlight Holy for it anyways. Molly. It's a really impressive pencil. Oh. That looks so real, Lisa. It does. Oh my god. Oh my gosh, the shading is amazing. I'm gonna go to. I'm gonna go in order so I don't miss anybody. Okay. There's Suman in order of my 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 gallery. But what oh. is that there, Suman? Okay, this is a candle holder. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. I don't know what it really looks like, but that looks really That's realistic. Great. <laughs> That's great. And we have uh, we'll go to we'll go to Barbara, and then we'll go to Vicho. So that's the order. So you don't have to. Oh, Barbara! Is that oh a yarn my ball? gosh! It is. Can you raise? Oh my it? gosh! Yeah. That's amazing. Whoa! The texture looks really awesome. Thank you. If you have the object, you can that's even great. hold it up <laughs> beside your sketch. Let's see, Nicole. Oh, nice. oh, the plant. Oh. Love it. That's oh. a really good one for shading for practice there. There's a lot of, it's a good one. It's a lot of work. Demi, it, it was definitely Demi. challenging. Yeah. Demi, what did you sketch there? Uh, made in bottle cap and, and I was trying to do a weight, <laughs> which by the way, these two things, I am very proud because I can't draw anything. So I've I think this was remarkable for me. That was awesome. The weight looks really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The shadowing there. He definitely applied. That's oh, awesome. Yeah, because I, I did what you said. Look at the um look at the shape in it. Mm -hmm. and try mm -hmm. to draw them. So that's how I did it. Normally it would just have been a stick figure. So thank you yeah. very much. You're I appreciate welcome. you. <laughs> it's definitely different when you start to recognize and like see things differently. It's, it sounds so like so 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 obvious, but when you start doing it. Okay, we'll go to Joy. Let's see what you did there, Joy. Is that a, oh, is it like a sculpture? Some sort of a sculpture you have? Or like a? It's a marrow. It's ah. A, it's so beautiful. nice. Oh, I like it. It's like a flower with a moon, it looks yeah. like. Yeah, really cool. Love it. What Pretty. did we do? Michelle, what did you sketch? um i sketched this pencil sharpener nice very nice love the shadowing there mm. it's like even when i put my glasses on I'm like oh there's a shadow on the table it's almost like you don't notice those shadows are there until you look for yeah. them <laughs> yeah so that's cool let's see ashley ashley you just finished off your oh so oh. cute <laughs> i just i basically um I, I did it over because I really wanted to like finish it up because I really love dogs. Love it. Ashley, Aww. where are you from? I hear a British what accent. Are you, are you I'm from, from Jamaica? Jamaica? I'm from oh, Jamaica. Oh, I love it. Are you, are you painting, I'm um, sketching from Jamaica today too? It's my first yes. Jamaican student. That's amazing. Amazing. Thank you. I clearly have a very bad, um, recognition for accents Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> amazing ashley let's see who didn't get to share yet lizeth let's see what did you sketch on your with the window <laughs> pencil box pencil box nice lots of different items love it what's that there is that a cup? Yeah. Very cool. Oh, there we go. Good. And I see Vicho. We have a Lilo or Stitch. This is Stitch. A stitch, yeah. I feel like I can <laughs> oh, do wow. That's great. I have this figure. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, wow. That's great. What program are you using to draw? It's uh, Clip Studio Paint. Clip Studio Paint. What? What? Is, one more time. What's the first clip word? Studio clip, paint. clip Studio Paint. Clip Everyone's Studio so Paint. Everyone's so talented. Wow, that's Love amazing. It. Lauren, what did you sketch there? I have a clay chalice. And nice. So, so I, I did oh, it. Oh, beautiful! Look at the shading. 
really good. Thank Love you. It. Good. Yeah, everyone is so talented. I agree, Leslie. Did anyone else not? Emily, did you want to share, Emily? Oh. Is that a. Is that a uh, the, I sketched my daughter doing her sketch. <laughs> oh my gosh, wow. that's amazing. Is, uh, beautiful. Thank you. Nice. And then my glasses. Well, I started with my glasses around the table first. <laughs> <laughs> that's, wow. that's awesome. Thank you. Can we see it? And then but she didn't. Did you? Me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. that's so cute <laughs> did anyone else not get to share i think that's everyone who who would like to share amazing lizeth did you do that too wow you're an artist that's amazing uh, this one yes oh. <laughs> okay wow you're talented. No, I thought he took her out. You're amazing, Lizeth. Keep going. Whoa. That's awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, joining tonight. I hope that you learned a bit about um, recognizing shapes and pressure control and just Great. having fun. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much for Thank doing Thank you, Miss Mikey. Thank yeah. you. Thank You're you. awesome. Enjoy, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Bye. Bye. See you at our next class. Yes, yes it was everybody. great Bye, to everyone. sketch with humans. Bye. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.